Bottle Collection, a painting by Sadie J. Valeri. I've always been interested in 17th century Dutch still life paintings, particularly the work of Willem Hede. When I finally got a chance to see one of his paintings in person, I was amazed to see the level of detail and realism that even when I got close to the painting, the illusion still held. The painting was not paint, the paint actually looked like the objects. I decided I wanted to see if I could approach the same level of realism in my own paintings, doing whatever it took to slow down and pay close attention to draftsmanship. I started a series of wax paper paintings because I felt like the wax paper had the qualities that I was looking for in terms of reflection and transparency. I liked the fact that I could sculpt the wax paper into different forms and create a space that was incredibly dynamic and engaging and really invite you into this very interesting space. Bottle Collection is the most ambitious in this series, being the largest and having the most complex composition. I really wanted something that would explore the full range of what wax paper could do in terms of creating a really beautifully dynamic and sculptural environment contrasted with these very small, simple, humble objects that I've collected over the years. I start all of my paintings with a very detailed line contour drawing in graphite pencil. I start them first on tracing paper so that I can work out the composition and figure out where everything needs to go and figure out the size and placement of all the elements. When I'm ready with my basic composition, I transfer that over onto my hand gesso panel. As I continue to refine the drawing on the panel, I'm continuing to look for ways the wax paper has its own structural integrity. I'm looking for a network of points that cross-reference each other to describe to me what exactly that wax paper is doing and really try and unlock the system of what is actually happening with that crumpled paper. With man-made objects, what I'm trying to do is make sure that they have the same character and the same structural integrity as the original man-made objects. I do a lot of very careful measuring with rulers and T-squares to make sure that the objects are perfectly symmetrical. The objects that have integrity in life must have that same integrity and structure in the painting. When the drawing is complete and I'm ready to start painting, I start working on the underpainting, which is this transparent layer of paint. I'm just using the white of the panel instead of using a white paint. This is just to establish all my basic values. In the next stage of the painting, I start using white paint as well as a full range of grays to start to really refine all of those values. Now that I've refined it, I'm starting to get ready to go into color and in more detail. Everything up till now has just been preparation, laying a bed for what will eventually be the part of the painting that you see, the final layers of the painting. You can see this area is getting to be more refined. I try and finish one area of the painting to the highest degree of finish that I'm capable of to sort of set the bar for the rest of the painting. And then I go throughout the rest of the painting and try and bring it up to that level. I work with very small brushes and I only work on a very small part of the painting each day. Each part of the painting when I'm working at this stage needs two full days to dry. And so I'll work on one area one day, the next day I'll move to a different area, and the third day I'll go back to the first area to bring it to a whole new level of refinement. The final layers of the painting take the most time because they require such subtle shifts in hues and values that I do very, very thin, thin layers of paint. The painting is finished when every single area has been brought up to the highest level of realism that I feel is possible with the paint. Often what I notice about my subject and what viewers notice about my painting is the surface details and the light and all of these sort of surface elements that draw us in and make us feel the beauty of the piece. However, none of that is possible without all the underlying structure of the drawing, the underlying structure of the values, the light in the dark. And so the only way that I'm able to get to those final levels of real enjoyment of just playing with those really, really beautiful subtle tones on the surface is if I've done all of the work as preparation underneath to support the expression of those final surface qualities.